Welcome back. Filipinos are known food aficionados, and that love for food has been celebrated many times over in the cookbooks of Nora Daza. Caroline Howard spent one afternoon with a culinary icon and got cooking instruction, instructions rather direct from the pro. Hello everyone, we're here with renowned culinary expert, advocate, and champion of Philippine cuisine, Nora Villanueva Daza. Hello and thank you for having us in your home. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you after all the times that I've seen you on television. Thank you, ma'am. Did you always have this kind of passion for food? How did it all start? When I was eight years old, I learned how to make hot cakes. Mm -hmm. And I had a neighbor who had plain food, plain majong, and I offered to make the merienda. And we had a special pancake, and we'd, I'd make that. And, you know, the, the praises I got, that was the stimulus for me. I realized that one of the pleasures in life is when people appreciate your cooking. And that's the incentive that really promote, pushed me into doing all I could for food. Because it's really very Filipino. I studied home economics and I graduated in foods and nutrition from the University of the Philippines. After I graduated from home economics, I got married right there. And the first time I ever made cream puffs, it did not puff. So I was ashamed, so I told my husband, oh, those are cookies. <laughs> I didn't dare tell him, but yung pala, I found out that you have to beat the eggs and add them one by one. You learn, you know, as I grow on, I learn every time. So when I write a cookbook, every time I learn something, my cousins, if I go and eat someplace and I like it, I say, how is this done? And that is how my repertoire of food increases. It's really my mother-in-law was a very good cook. That's all she did. She would go to market on Wednesday and Sunday we would have a menu that was always different. She always wanted to please her family. And I really m learned a lot from her. Who among your children took after you? Nina, who went to Cornell, and Sandy, who went to Cornell. Nina, Nina, by the way, the editor of Appetite Magazine. And Sandy, uh, well, he is doing a lot of food. And he, he used to do a TV show with me. But as regards tradition, Filipino cooking, what was that like in the Daza home? I come from a family that's very patriotic. And I really wanted to push Philippine cuisine because it's the one that we really have that's our, really our own. When, when I opened my restaurant in Paris, I was devastated because the French didn't even know about the Philippines. So I had the menu and put the Philippines in red, in the middle, Indonesian, all black, because I wanted the French to know about us. One of my guests was Brigitte Bardot and Simone de Beauvoir. Okay. And they liked our fresh lumpia. The French love escargot, which is yes. nailed. So what I do, I cook a big pan of kukulbikol. I'd can it in small batches and ship it to Paris. They have escargot in cans and get one of their escargot, put it on top and got cream and broil it. And they loved it. Because can you imagine, they've never eaten bagoong with coconut milk, with este, a, a turmeric. They, it was a new experience for them. So they will write about it. The, imagine, they mentioned me in Did Michelin. Mm -hmm. I mean, a Filipino cuisine in Did Michelin with two forks and spoon. I think that is the acme of cuisine. You were a restaurateur, had a TV cooking show, Cooking It Up with Nora, and were also a published author. How was it juggling all that? I didn't think about it. I just went into it with my heart and soul. I enjoyed what I was doing. I loved it. It was heaven. You know, living from one place to the other. And each one, I had a, luckily, 
because I have a restaurant, I have personnel. So they help me in every place I live. You enjoy French cuisine as well as Filipino food. How does one reconcile that? French cuisine is very refined. They are really meticulous about their sauces. What can you say distinguishes us from the rest of the you world? Know, when I've been in South America, South uh, East Asia, no one uses hugas biga. We're the only one who uses hugas biga. And I think, you know, if you make a sinigang without the hugas biga, it's not the same. It's not the same. And nowhere in Southeast Asia do they do that. What is the secret to cooking a perfect dish? In cooking, it's very important to taste. I always taste. Even when I had my French restaurant, I wouldn't tell anybody. I'd come and I'd go down and taste the sauces. Thank God I think I have a very discriminating palate. You're introducing on Taste Buds now a pasta dish. Uh -huh. It's a cannelloni and you're incorporating into a meat pie or meat pasta dish and vegetables. And uh, bechamel sauce mm -hmm. which is made with uh, cream, butter and milk and cheese. Mm -hmm. And so in the kitchen of the esteemed cooking yes, diva, yes, we're cooking yes, it up yes, with yes, Nora. Okay, ma'am Nora, what did we start with? With garlic, with oil first. Okay. Then we saute garlic and onion. And we have brown chicken Pun and liver spread. Po. Next we put liver spread. Yeah. Lahat po ito? Yeah. Okay, we just add everything in. So we are making a cannelloni. Yeah. A very tasty one. Uh -oh. We put butter and ham. 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 And we break the egg. While our meat filling is cooking, to save on time, we boil some cauliflower and broccoli and make our bechamel sauce. Powdered milk. And mix. I'm supposed to be mixing this. Mix and mix. Okay. Yes, two yeah. cups. <laughs> a cup of. So, uh, proportion is one is to two. We have to add some flour. That's the way to do it. You have to be thick. Uh, I will taste it because we'll see if it's salty yeah. enough. Or okay, what. and I will trust your taste buds. You're doing well. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> By Mam's perfect no. estimate, some more, some more, we need some, more. some salt. Now, I am not pretending to be a protege of Miss <laughs> Daza, but uh, my friend. <laughs> this is a start. <laughs> Say it. It's getting thicker. Yes, it's that's getting the, thicker. That's the so that's the consistency flour. you want. Uh -huh. But I have to taste it, you know. We layer some boiled lasagna on a greased baking dish, then add layer after layer of the rest of the ingredients. And now, we put uh, the meat? cream, the, the cream. bechamel sauce. A layer of cream over a layer of pasta. Sauce yeah. at the bottom. And the tomato top. Top this off with chicken mixture. How nice to have somebody do it. And All the work for me. How nice to have the expert then telling me how to do it. Very a layer good. of boiled vegetables. Yep. Healthy. That's for ma'am's instruction. Healthy. She's going all out. <laughs> okay. And now cream. Darling. More cream? Yeah. Bechamel. That's bechamel yes, sauce. Yes, more bechamel. Grated cheddar cheese. Then we bake it. Ma'am Nora, what we have here is something taken from one of your recipes, yeah. the cannelloni, except that we didn't quite follow the recipe, did you we? You know, uh, I have always told people, as long as what you put in is edible, it's eat it. But you know, you have to taste it yes. to see how it is. So, we will see how it comes out. But we will see how it tastes. And with some chicken there. Yeah. Vegetables yep. and the pasta. Okay. Bon appetit. Here we go. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. It worked. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. Very hearty meal. All in mm. one dish. Mm. And easy to do. Ma'am, there are several books attributed to you, uh, beginning with Let's Cook with Nora, of course, mm. the pioneer. Obviously, a lot of people use your very first cookbook as a Bible, yeah. practically. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm gratified that I feel that I've contributed to make our homes better. I'm doing festive dishes because 
all the food that I know uh, that is bouillabaisse, cassoulet, and, uh, and uh, boeuf and coup, that's beef wellington. Mm -hmm. And I have a recipe which I paid for uh, to make uh, foie gras using chicken liver. How does it feel to have such a distinction attached to your name? It pleases me because I feel that I've helped in making people appreciate food. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, now there's organic food and thank God we're evolving. We are making life easier and more efficient because women work. Today's world, women, women have to work because everything is more expensive. And of course, it helps women to grow. If there were one thing you really most cherish about all your years in the industry, what would that one thing be? Oh my goodness, it would be my children. <laughs> my children, they are my number one concern in life. Uh, I call them every day if I can, and I worry about them. Ma'am, such a pleasure. Thank you very much for opening your home and opening your heart to us <laughs> oh, here yes. at Taste Buds. It's my pleasure. I've been with ABS-CBN from 1958, for heaven's sake. The pleasure and honor is ours. Yeah, oh my goodness. Thank you very much, and happy mm. Mother's Day. Ma that will do it for this edition of Taste Buds. I'm Caroline Howard. Remember, life's a treat. Till next time.